So I got tired of having to pick between a chip paint and LED effect. So I'm going to show you guys uh, how I made this right here. Uh, it lets the LEDs shine through. So first I have smoky gray resin. This is the right shoulder of my Mark IV Mjolnir armor printed on the L uh, no, yeah, Anycubic Mono X. Uh, I really like this printer. It turns out some decent stuff. So I hit it with filler primer like you would most prints. Um, it may be weird to do it, but as you can see, I sanded it back down to the point where it's almost see-through again, and it just kind of fills in the cracks uh, that you needed to fill in, which I also think works out. It gives it a slight effect. Then we put a light dusting of a metallic coat on, just enough to uh, make it look metallic, and it still lets line sh light shine through when you're done. So the next thing I'm doing here is uh, I have masking fluid. Um, it's really cheap on Amazon. You can get a small thing of it, and I'm just kind of putting it on the edge. There's a lot of different effects you can do with this. Uh, what I'm doing here is trying to get the edges to look like they've been hit. Uh, there's different effects you can really do with it. You can make it look like it's just chipped. Uh, you can make it look like impact marks. It's all depending on your brush strokes and how you do it. Uh, it does take some time to really learn how to do that. Uh, you have to get experience with it, and I still have a lot to work on my experience with it. Um, so we start fast forwarding here soon, just so I can go through it all, and then we'll stop near the end of it. Uh, yeah, as you see, I'm kind of taking my time brushing all the latex off, or all the uh, kind of all over that edge. The good thing about this stuff is, if you mess up, you can kind of just push it, and it'll um, peel back off in one piece pretty well, as long as you give it time to dry. So I go over most of it a second time because you want to make sure that edge gets enough over it so it doesn't just leave the edge with paint because that's the opposite of the effect you're trying to do. So going over it, going over it. Um, you can see here soon, uh, I decided that spot right there I did a little too large and I wipe a lot of it off. But uh, you can kind of see that I've gone overboard in that one spot. Um, yeah, trying to get my paint chipping. So for the effect I wanted, it will go across the chest, the lighting will. So I kind of wanted a line that goes up and around it, but at the same time I want it to be, uh, I want it to not be uniform, but at the same time be a path for all the lights to go. So it looks like it's one effect. So just kind of going over it, making sure I like where the latex is going. You can see I go over a couple spots the second time. I wipe off some spots that I didn't really like. Now slow it down. Uh, this is the last kind of spot I wanted to get. I wanted to make sure that little uh, outcrop there gets some beating to it because if you're wearing this armor, that's what you'd normally get. I'm trying to decide where else I want to put any of it if I do. Um, yeah, and then right there, I just wipe it back off because like I said, it peels off into your hand. And I'm just trying to get any final spots that I think shouldn't have any uh, paint on it. And then I go back over a couple spots here, make sure I like what I have, and ta-da. So next, what we're gonna do is go over that with a uh, gray. So this is with one light coat of gray. Uh, you can see the light hose going through it specifically because I, you have to do a few coats. You wanna make sure no light's coming through it. So after I did that and start peeling off the uh, latex um, masking fluid, sorry, uh, about the quality by the way it's uh <laughs> first time making a tutorial video on any of this um so you can just kind of peel that latex paint off and it makes it really nice and the good thing is because the way it peels off it actually does chip the paint it's not just uh like masking tape where you pull it off and you have a clear line this actually does chip the tank chip the paint the way you want it to and right here we have the first uh example of how it'll kind of look so you can see it looks like normal metal. Then when I raise it up to light, you have light coming up through just that one spot. And that's the exact look that we wanted. So after that, I'm going to fast forward, take off all the rest of the latex paint. You can kind of brush it off with your finger and it'll peel up, which is really nice. And again, it chips the paint in the process. It's not just uh, blocking the paint from that area. It really does chip it and it gives it a great look. Um... I actually came up with this idea because I went to do the map where you mask off the clear areas and I realized it's shining through the paint and I tried it with some silver and it worked out great. So now I've taken off all the masking uh, stuff, all our masking fluid is off, 
Now when I raise it up to the light, we can get, bam, comes through all the clear, uh, all the silver areas, which is exactly what we wanted. Next, I have these addressable five volt LEDs that I am going to put into it. Um, so the LEDs that I bought last had a already, um, had a board that came with it. It's under my right hand right now that plugs into the lights and it made it a lot easier for testing. So I have, it's a five volt circuit or around five volts. So I went ahead and put four AA batteries to it, which is six volts, but it doesn't matter. Uh, it still works out pretty well for these. So I'll give it a second for me to get it set up. Uh, the next thing you're gonna see me do is take, uh, take our foam and our lights there. So in this, vid in this portion of the video, I just put the lights in. I wanted to make sure the lights are glowing through how we want and that piece of foam is just gonna keep them against the uh, shoulder piece just to make sure we can, you always wanna test throughout to make sure you're getting the look that you want. You don't wanna go too far and realize you don't like it. So now we can turn the lights on. It takes a second because I should have used my alligator clips for these, but it comes through. Um, you can see in some of the smaller areas that it has issues with the light coming through, which I have mixed feelings about. I can go over that with gray acrylic probably and uh, finish it, but at the same time, I do kind of like the look, so I think I'm gonna keep it. Um, also, these lights aren't uh, diffused, so all the light is gonna shine through directly. Uh, it doesn't have anything in between to really slow it from having the light effect where you can see the LEDs. Um, but this is, it works the way I want it to. So I use some of this packaging foam to cut out a uh, diffuser. So it breaks the light up and you can't really tell. Next, we're gonna hot glue that in. Uh, kind of fast forward through this. I think everyone at this point should know how to hot glue. If you don't, you know, no problem. It's not that difficult. You'll probably learn it really easy and it's really cheap to do. Um, so I made sure all that foam is pushed into there. Uh, you want to make sure you'll see the small little scrap pieces of foam that I also glued in there because I want to make sure any light that's going to go through the chip paint effect is uh, diffused. So I pushed those into the corners where there's also the chipped effect. So I'm going to go around all of it with hot glue. Um, this is actually my first time using that foam. I found it. Uh, I think it was from the box that was actually to my Mono X, and I figured, oh no, it was uh, the box from my Sierra Tech resin. So yes, for the part, the uh, material that I'm using is Soraya Tech Fast ABS-like, uh, smoky gray. I really like that material. Since switching to Soraya Tech, I've had a lot less fails on my prints. So I would highly recommend them, by the way. Um, so I'm just going around, making sure. Uh, the good thing about hot glue is it's also translucent which helps with diffusing if any of the light needs to go through it. I got some on my hands there, it's not a problem. <laughs> Do a lot of 3D printing, so I already burn myself all the time between that and soldering. Um, so just kind of going around, and then next I'm going to uh, solder these small little wires onto our uh, LED strips. So um, it's kind of a pain, but at the same time, it's what I do at work anyways, but at least I can do this for my own projects. Again, sorry about the quality. This is my first time doing a tutorial. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tin the leads on each one of those. Uh, these kind of suck to solder. They have such small soldering pads, but honestly, this is probably one of the smoothest uh, um, times I've had soldering LEDs, something like this. So I'm just kind of going through, make sure you have your uh, wires correct, otherwise you could fry your circuits if you're not using uh, pre-done wires. So I did them in parallel so we can make sure the lighting effect is the same because I want that lighting effect going through every area that's chipped in that line. The red marks are where I want to line up my uh, LEDs. So I'm kind of lining them up uh, to make sure I like where they're going. Yeah, the red marks right where I just pointed. Alrighty, so line those up, and that's kind of what we're doing. So we're going to take our hot glue gun. Uh, it's warming up at this point, and then finally we start uh, soldering everything in. Uh, the one bad thing about hot glue is how messy it is, but at the same time it's just so cheap and so easy to use that it makes it really good for this type of stuff. And you can peel it off without much damage to the paint. But the way I did the part, if it chips any of the paint, it's not really going to cause an issue. I don't think I had any issues with that in this one. 
Um, they do have a few different sizes of hot glue gun. Uh, I, I like the small one for stuff like this where I have to get into small areas, but I do wish I had a bigger one, which I'll probably get later on. Um, it's kind of hard to see, but on the wires, I have a two-in-one heat shrink tube and soldering tube, which makes it so much easier. There's no more soldering wires. You can just take a heat gun and really close it. You get a clear view of them right there. Uh, it's the clearish red on the wires area. Uh, so keep hot gluing. Make sure all these LEDs are going to stay where they are. You want them kind of pushed into the foam for the best diffusion effect, in my experience. Uh, I have them in kind of a V because I wanted it, like I said, to cover all the different areas. And then uh, we have them glued in. I made sure to glue the wires because I don't want them sticking out. So they're glued to kind of bend back in. And then they'll go through the shirt or skin layer. And then we have this. Once those lights are on, you can get it all shiny and everything you want. So yeah, that's... Uh,